Hi everyone, this is Reese here, calling you from quarantine land. Uh, we're going to be starting a new topic today, homeostasis, which I think is B5 in the revision guide. If you've forgotten, you've got to dig it out. It's this one. So have a look at page, page 57 for today, because uh, that's basically what I'm going to go over. What I want you to be able to do is, from the end of this video, copy along what I'm doing like we were doing in class. And then I'll have at the end of the video a few slides for you to have a go at some questions on. Um, just follow along with me. You don't have to have all the colours that I have. It's, it's up to you. Just make sure you do take some notes and you save these for revision in the future for when we get back to normal. So this new topic that we're starting is called homeostasis. Now. That word can look a bit intimidating. It's, you know, posh scientific language as we were talking about. But as always, if we break the word down, you can work out roughly what it means. So we've got two parts. We've got homeo. Homeo, to think of homo, homosexual, is you're attracted to the same gender. Uh, in this case, we're taking the bit that means that something is staying the same. And you're gonna pair that up with stasis, which means keeping something stable or not letting it move. So if you ever look at this, homeostasis has got to be to do with something, keeping things the same, keeping things stable. So if we're gonna write ourselves a definition, we're gonna say that homeostasis is the control of a constant internal environment. Now we are talking about humans, but this would apply to other animals, mammals. Um, I, I suppose plants even have their own version of homeostasis, but it's not enough like ours that we need to bother with at this stage. This also needs to pair up with another bit of information because this could potentially be worth two marks in an exam. So it's the control of a constant internal environment to keep conditions um, favorable in the body. Okay. I'm going to switch to doing a mind map now, just to help us map out the content of this part of the video, as well as you can use it for the questions at the end. So grab a new bit of paper or flip over. You're going to want something with double sided because I'm going to get you to turn it over and try and do it from memory afterwards. Again, if you want to use colour, you can, you don't have to, but please just copy along with what I'm doing because you'll need it and the information for a quiz at the end. Homeostasis. Again, sounds complicated, but at this stage, you just really need to know what it is generally, what controls it, what it affects, and a few examples. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is what it affects. So homeostasis controls or affects three main things in your body that you need to know about. It controls your temperature. It controls your blood sugar or blood glucose levels. also controls um, things like your water level, so how much you wee in a day, as well as sweating. It's not all about wee. Okay, homeostasis controls things like temperature, blood sugar and water levels, but it, it is it's a process and something has to make it go and stop. So the two ways that your body sort of control homeostasis are with hormones and nerves. So it is controlled by hormones and controlled by nerves. We're mainly going to focus on nerves today in all in a minute, but just a little overview of what hormones are because they are going to come into their own. Hormones are proteins or substances that are made of protein that cause uh, an effect in the body. So for example, uh, insulin controls your blood sugar, testosterone is the male sex hormone, estrogen is the female sex hormone. They are just a substance that brings about a change somewhere else. Okay, your nerves are a bit more complicated they're made of three main parts. You've got receptors. They detect change. 
you have coordinators. They process the information. So that would be stuff like your brain, your um, spinal cord. And then you've got your effectors that bring about the change. So for example, you'd have a receptor being your eye that would detect light. That information would go to your optic, through your optic nerve to your brain, which would you know coordinate what you're seeing. And then the effector could be uh, the muscles that control your uh, iris and make your pupils bigger or smaller. Homeostasis, going back to start with, it controls th these three conditions, but you need to know generally at this point what happens when those conditions get too high or too low. So when conditions get too high, so for example you're too hot or you've had too much sugar in your diet, your body would use those responses, those hormones and those nerves to bring about the change, to bring you back to that stable level. So if it's too high, it's going to uh, lower levels, be that water, sugar. And if it's too low, it's gonna raise them up, raise the roof. So that'd be, you know, if you don't have enough glucose, you can't carry out respiration, so you'll feel tired. So you're gonna have to raise those levels by shoving a chocolate biscuit in your face. Right, the next bit we need to focus on why homeostasis is important. If you think back to what we did on um, enzymes earlier in the year, you'll know that if enzymes get too hot, they denature. That means that they break apart the bonds that sort of hold them in that 3D shape fall apart so they don't work anymore. So if, for example, your body temperature, which is around 36 and a half degrees, gets too high, and when we're saying too high, we mean a degree or two. If you're talking 39, 40 degrees is pretty high, those enzymes are gonna to start to unravel and you can't carry out respiration, you can't build proteins, you can't get the nutrients out of food. So it's important that you have the correct temperature for your enzymes. So, 36 and a half degrees C in a human, a-okay. Your enzymes are looking good, like your Pac-Man, and your little substrate's gonna fit in there. That's gonna get broken down, hooray. But if you go above your optimum temperature, so if you start fitting 40 plus degrees, that's bad. Your enzymes are gonna denature, and those substrates aren't gonna fit anymore, so no respiration. That is pretty much what homeostasis is in a nutshell. What I'm going to challenge you to do now is to pause this video, turn your sheet over, try and recreate what you can from memory, don't worry if you can't remember much, then when you've exhausted your brain power, flip your sheet back over, put any corrections in, and then do that you know, every now and again for a bit of revision. What's, what we're going to do next is just have a look at the nerves in a bit more detail, talk through the overview of how you go from seeing a delicious bit of cake to shoving a bit of cake in your face, um, ready for when we go on to looking at reflex arc and that in the next video. Right, the next thing we need to look at and the final part that we need to look at today is how this homeostasis control system works. How does your body know what's going wrong and how to put it right again? So. Right, you can split the control system up into four main parts. You have your stimulus. Now, stimulus is just a change in the environment. It's it's something that will change to that, that your body will have to react to. So your main stimulus is, think of your five senses. You've got um, sight, so light. You have smell, you have taste, you have temperature, which is a bit of a strange one, you don't really have a sense of temperature but that's just 
um, controlled by your skin or detected by your skin. Uh, you have the sense of touch, which again is, con is detected by the skin. And you've also got sort of pressure as well, which goes under the touch category. So those are stimuluses, changes in the environment. Stimuluses or stimuli are detected, so picked up on. Hang on, I'm just having a spelling moment. Okay, stimuluses are detected by receptors. Now receptors are just organs, parts of your body that detect stimuluses. So for example, for the sense of sight, you've got the eye, for smell, you have nose. Ooh. You might be tempted to say, you know, I, you touch things with your hands or, or your fingers, but it's the skin on the fingers, skin on your hands that does the detecting. So they only allow skin in the exams. Okay. So stimulus, change in the environment, it's detected by a receptor. That will send the information to your coordination center or your central nervous system. Now your central nervous system is just made up of your brain and your spinal cord. So your brain would be, well, everyone knows what a brain is. You're currently using one now to work for my video, hopefully. You haven't switched it off since we've all been home. So you've got the brain and your spinal cord is just the first section of spine just in your neck. So between those two bits, it controls your whole world. That's why if you have a break on too high on your neck, it's, it's you know game over because that is what's controlling your entire body. So your brain and your spinal cord is in your central nervous system. Think of it like a computer or, or the decision center. It will say it will get the information from the stimulus and then decide what it's going to do with it. So it will process the information. That gets sent onto an effector. Effectors are a bit strange. They are, they only come in two forms. You've got muscles. So if your effect is gonna be something moves, move your arm, move your leg, move that bit of pie into your face. Uh, or it could be a gland. Now we'll cover what glands are a bit more in a future video, but for now a gland, a gland is just an organ or a collection of cells that makes another hormone or makes another substance that causes a change in your body. Uh, gland. A uh, gland that we're going to come across a lot in this topic is your pancreas. Or glands within the pancreas itself. Okay, the last step is the effector will bring about the change as well. So, if we start from the beginning. In homeostasis, remember this is mainly the nervous system that we're talking about, nervous response, but you can link them either way. You have a stimulus. So it could be, for example, uh, seeing a ball flying towards you on the pit uh, on the field. That is detected by your receptor, which is your eye. The eye sends that information via the optic nerve to the central nervous system, those coordination centers, made to be brain and spinal cord. That processes that information, decides what you're gonna do, and then that information gets sent down to an effector, which is the muscle if you wanna move something, or a gland if you wanna cause a longer term change, and that causes a response. Well, that's it for today. If you just wanna have a look at the bit that's coming up, try out these questions. Please do them honestly. If you just skip ahead to the answers, you're just gonna be cheating yourself. And also make sure you check, um, I will link to it in the description of the video, but if you go back to Google Classroom and check through on the link, just have a go at the quiz to one, I know that you've looked at this video, and two, that something's gone into your brain. And I will see you next time, I usually have you. And extracurricular work today is to do something nice for a family member.